We're live. Hello, everyone. Happy Monday. This is Beth Stevens. Hi. Who am I? In case we haven't met. Um, it's Who's Mon my, Introduce me. Oh, this is um, Paul, Paul Antoric. Antoric. Thank you. We're both wearing black. We, we call each other every morning when every we do this. Every morning. Tomorrow's going to be red and white stripes. Okay, I'll work Or I'm going to do a Kellyanne yeah, Conway, like a red, white, and crazy red, white, and blue. So we have a guest today. Oh, yeah, Joe Cassidy. <laughs> Joe Cassidy is here from Waitress. Who's and awesome. The reason why I was trying to say it's Monday, January 23rd is because today is actually National Pie Day. Did, did, did Joe even know that? Did you know Joe, that? Joe, did you know I, that? I, 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 yeah, where's yeah, the pie? Really where's, cool. the pie? Where's, the pie? Really where's the pie? Cool. I have, yeah. Where's my so pie? That's the most, we have breaking news. We have breaking oh, news. yeah, we have breaking news. So this is kind of amusing, too, because you know they're doing Sunday in the Park with George. At the brand new, Hudson. old, renovated Hudson the Theater. Historic. Brand new. First time it's been a broad. Uh, I guess it maybe it's been a Broadway theater before. I don't even know the answer to that. I'm getting myself <laughs> in a really wormhole. Really giving a lot of facts here. <laughs> anyway, so we knew that Anna Lee Ashford and Jake Gyllenhaal were reprising their roles from the encores, right. and they didn't. We didn't know who the rest of the cast was, and they had a great, like, kind of all-star cast for and encores. The concert, yeah. And we got a press release right before we went on camera. There it is. And I was like, and they just listed like. All these amazing actors, and they didn't say who's playing what. So we all scrambled, and you should have heard. That's what we should, we should have gone live for all of us. So watching to, us scramble for who's it would, playing. Well, it would have been funny all of us guessing who's playing what because so I had all these theories that were totally who are wrong. Who going to be in this show? But you know, I I have to say I'm a little disappointed that Felicia Rashad's not in it because she played old lady and she was on. And that's the actual character name, by the way. <laughs> so it's, it's George's not an mom. Opinion. It's not a yeah. It's anyway, not kind of uh, she was great, but she's not in it. No. Uh, Penny Fuller's playing that role. Yeah. Robert Sean Leonard. Is now playing Jules. Has he done many musicals? Uh, Tony Winner, Robert That's a good John question. Leonard. I mean, oh. Jules doesn't sing that much. But he's in a musical. But he sings. I'm just um, and opposite Jules, so Carmen Cusack played the role before. Well, well who played Jules before? I didn't see You know, A's she side. loves me. Zach Levi. Zach Levi oh. did it. And then Carmen Cusack was uh, Yvonne. And now mm -hmm. that's going to be Aaron, Aaron Davey. Davey. Not Mara Davi, Aaron Davy. We always mix up these people, but they actually don't look anything alike. <laughs> we love them both. We love them both. Their names are just too similar. <laughs> anyway, and who else is in it? Ashley Park is now in it. Uh, Ruth Ann Miles. Miles is in it again. She was in it before. Mm -hmm. um, Brooks Chris S. Maskus. Who was in it before, too, right? Yes. And Philip Boykin, Jenny Barber, Claiborne Elder. It's a great cast. Jordan it's a Gelber. It's really amazing cast. Uh, Liz McCartney. Anyway, I can't list everybody, but... Michael McElroy, hey, you went to school with him. I did. So anyway, this is what we get. We get these releases, and then suddenly we're like piecing what? it together. As we, so anyway, that's happening. We're so we know who's. We kind of know who's playing what. If you look on Broadway.com, maybe there'll be more information. <laughs> or maybe not. Or maybe not. <laughs> but you know what? Go see it because it's a brilliant. It's one of my top three favorite shows. Me too. Yep. We agree. And you have to see it. Like even if you've if you've seen it, you want to see it. But if you've never seen it, you have to see it. So go get your tickets. Okay. Anyway, Beth, what else is happening? Ooh, that was a lot. Uh, Darren Chris, We love Darren Chris. We know Chris. him. He's going to play a villain in this cool musical crossover between Supergirl and The, the Flash. Flash. I love how you had to look. You two of your favorite know. superhero shows, But right? I do know, my favorites, I do know that Grant Gustin is in The Flash. Melissa, I don't know how to say it. And what was he in on Broadway? Grant Gustin was in the tour of West Side Story. And on Broadway. I think he was like a cover for a little bit. Anyway. Okay, but did I get it right? According to my research. The pop quizzes, I'll never... But you got it. You nailed okay. it. Yeah, so anyway, Darren Chris is going to play a villain, and Mar it's going to be on March 20th and March 21st, and he's going to On the sing. CW. All the kids love the CW. I'm not a kid, so is I don't that know the that. Is that the channel that's going to have Riverdale? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we got a nod from Thank our God millennial we got producer. Caitlin here. Caitlin Callum. <laughs> Do you know what Riverdale's a reboot of? I don't know what you're the talking Archie about. The Archie comics. Yeah. Okay. So like, you know, the fun Archie comics are not becoming a dark TV show. It has nothing to do with Broadway. Sorry for distracting. What else, Beth? Any wow. news with Tina Fey? Well, Tina Fey is our number, your number one pick. Of the, we asked you which Oh Hello guest should come to Broadway, like, for real, not just to get some... Time. You know who the last one was? David Letterman went and did the last Oh Hello, which is cool. That is cool. I think he got, like, a standing ovation. They had a know. great last week at the Grosses. That's in the Grosses this week. And they taped um, for Netflix. And they taped for Netflix, and they recouped on Broadway, and you guys want Tina Fey to come to Broadway for real. Not like Mean Girls, like, really, like, as a performer. I feel like she's won other polls that we've done about people who should come to Broadway. I think yeah. people just want <laughs> Tina Fey on Broadway. It'd be fun. But she's at least going to write something for Broadway. That's right. Yeah, anyway. Um, last, on Friday, Lin-Manuel Miranda released his early Hamilton demos. Yeah, I know. He kind of just was his like... His first draft. He's like, here, happy just, anniversary. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was fun. Happy inauguration day. Um, this is kind of sad and weird news. Robbie Bates, John Robin Bates, oh, the playwright, yeah, was, was assaulted in D.C. on inauguration day. And it's 
called a suspected hate crime by the D.C. police. And Did you insane. read his He's whole okay. essay? He wrote like an essay about it for Vanity Fair. That's right. Uh, yeah, it was and he described the whole thing. So that's. I'm glad he's on the mend, though. I'm glad. Yeah, I'm. I'm yeah, and he's got a new him. play, and he's you know, he's a, he's one of our. He's great working voices. on uh, according to that article. He's working on American Crime Story. That's right. It's Katrina. Katrina. I read Katrina. it as American Horror Story Katrina, and I thought that doesn't sound right. That doesn't but I thought sound it was American right at Crime all. Story. That's like a whole different thing. Um, Cynthia Rebo told people she's going to do a London con- London concert, but didn't it was give very any dramatic. Details. She just like very went on. Dramatic. She went live everywhere and was like, "I have something to tell you." And then she just sat there for a few minutes. Then she's like, I'm going to do a concert. I don't know. Somewhere yeah, this yeah. week. Yeah, you'll, you'll. And now, then she tweeted later, more information tomorrow. Right. So maybe so this is just a big tease. We'll, we'll update you tomorrow on that one. I want um, to go live and just announce, like, just say, like, something big's happening. Go ahead. <laughs> We're live right now. <laughs> do your thing. Um, remember School of Rock's Isabella Russo? She played Summer, the manager. Didn't we, we did a fresh face we on did her. We did at the record store. She's, yeah, she was great. She's, she's very awesome. sweet. She's going to be an NBC pilot. I know. I love That's that. Awesome. Congratulations, love Isabella. Blowing up. So every year, Paul Rudd has a bowling party. Do you okay. know about that? Like a Broadway bowling party? Yeah. And this year, Brandon Victor Dixon, who's in Hamilton, of oh. course, is going to host it. And the benefits go to Camp Say, which is a stuttering association for the young. It's on February 13th. We never go to this bowling thing. We should bowl. I went once, but I didn't bowl. I you have to be like you have to be like a Tony nominee to bowl. Or oh, something. that's good because I don't like wearing rented shoes anyway. Um, also, in the odds and ends today, there's Kate McKinnon's amazing Roxy Hart tape with Kelly and Conway, which was really just and there were like real basically we created Roxy completely. from the movie. I would yeah, say. the movie version of Roxy. We have to know which version. It was very impressive. Though. It was very yeah. impressive. She should come to Broadway. Yeah. Right. And there that? were real like Broadway people. Oh, I know. Boys. Real boys. Real yeah, Broadway real Broadway boys. boys. Also, Hot Shots today, we have a lot of um, photos from the Women's March, including Jake Gyllenhaal, just to tie it back into Sunday in the Park. Good job. Patti Lapone went to a Bronx tale. That's always fun. Um, Andy Carl pointed out his Groundhog Day marquee. Yeah, he did a selfie in front he of He did that. a selfie. Uh, hold on, wait. I just want to see what people are talking to us about. Um, they want Carmen Cusack. She'll come back to Broadway. Of course she will. Of course. Beth, Peyton wants to know, what's your favorite Sunday in the Park with George song? Well, I can I go first? No, because that wasn't directed toward okay, you. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> what's your favorite favorite song? I mean, I think Move On. Not my answer. Oh, good. We're well, different. Well, remember I did that. I had the very difficult task uh, that I gave to myself of oh, ranking my thing. favorite 80 Sondheim songs, the best. And number one was from Sunday Park with George. I don't know what you're Finishing the hot. Well, that's Finishing that, the hot is the like two, the most beautiful, those are both very beautiful song things. about everything. They both are. Yeah, move, we'll move on. Just more like move on. Um, <laughs> because you always give me pop quizzes while we're live, I decided <laughs> I was going to ask you some questions about pies because it's National Pie Day, oh, and God. we have a waitress person. A person? Yeah, Joe a waitress Cassidy, person. Joe super Cassidy, talent. a star. Pardon me. <laughs> are you ready? Uh, George thinks that the Weisers are going to ask Kate McKinnon to be in, in Chicago on Broadway, <laughs> so that might happen. Well, now that you mention it, they probably will. Yeah, anyway, go ahead. Um, any other questions you want me to ask? Answer? No. 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 Questions. No. David Letterman and Tina Fey should write and start in a comedic play together. And George wrote that in all caps, which might Maybe make, they should do like Seascape and we're all being, they could be lizards. That would be amazing. Uh, and they love Jesse Mueller, but we'll get to her. We're going to talk about her. Everybody loves Jesse Mueller. Anyway, what, what do you want to quiz me? I'm sorry. Pies. I don't know. I don't really want to quiz you, but I will he, tell you he this. He can. All right, you know, pies are famous for being thrown in people's faces. Yeah. You know when it was first done on film? In 1909. Yes, that's right, in 1909. But more importantly, tomorrow, because every day it has a holiday now, like there's a lot of just looking at me like I'm crazy. It's so random. Every day is a holiday. Today's <laughs> National Pie Day. Tomorrow, there's three. Are you ready? <laughs> And I'm going to expect you to come through on these for me. <laughs> January 24th, that's tomorrow. It's Beer Can Appreciation Day. They look like this, but they have beer. They don't look like that Not because self-serve. they have beer. Correct. <laughs> National Compliment Day, I'll be looking for that Aww, one. And, your, and something that really makes me think of you, National Peanut Butter Day. I was, uh, my favorite pie. I thought you were going to ask me about my favorite pie and it have something to do with peanut butter. What's your favorite pie? Something with peanut butter. All right, Beth, enough. Goodbye, goodbye, everybody. Ridiculous. All right, everyone, please welcome waitress star Joe Cassidy.
Hey, hello. Nice applause leader. Very nice. How are you doing? I'm very well. Thanks. What a applause Thanks, machine. We have a studio audience in here. That's right. Oh, you're so great. Just don't need cameras on them. How are you, sir? I'm all right. Your I, like your, I like your hair product. I love your facial hair. It's Thank ridiculous. you. Ridiculous. I know. It's ridiculous. No, this, is, this, this is like an Eric Anderson thing, isn't it? it? Well, it, it is indeed, yeah. And I said, I, I tweeted to um, Harry Shearer that I said, you know, um, I took Derek Smalls as my as my inspiration from Spinal Tap. Oh, my God. Uh, the bass player. This is what his, his kind of looked like, but... I've had yeah. a few comments on it, that, um, uh, you know, on the look. Somebody said to me, are you, in, are, you, what, are you doing something now, man, or are you just trying to be awesome? And I was like, <laughs> I was like yeah, just, I'm just trying to be awesome. Yeah. Now. <laughs> now, you are a Broadway vet. This is actually, yes. you are in Waitress right now, and you're playing yeah. who? I play Cal. Which is Eric Anderson opened Step, in yep, the role. He, he he's on break. He's, he's on, on doing something exciting. And you are you are stepped in for the role, so you're you're slinging hash. I'm slinging hash. Yep, slinging hash and maybe fooling around with waitresses and stuff. Perhaps maybe some kissing and stuff and, and some spatula action. Yes. Uh, and this is your how many Broadway shows have you been in? Do you know the answer? I do know the answer. Uh, it's eight. Uh, thank you very much. Eight. Although eight. the people who've done Christmas Carol, we count that as one as well too, because it was Susan Stroman and Mike Cochran. But oh, we oh, oh Master Square Garden. Okay, okay. Garden okay. So that's, everyone's good. That's about. fair. But not not yeah. a Tony eligible show. Not a Tony. I'm not show. counting it. So, <laughs> so you have the right answer. So eight is the number. If you said nine, I would have thought, wow, this, this guy really thinks eight. something of himself. Yep. Now, oh, look at that. So what was, I have notes about you. What was your first? I've seen you in many things. See, uh, what was your first Broadway show? First Broadway show I did was uh, the revival, uh, Hal Prince's revival of Showboat. Ah. 1994. Yeah. Yeah, and you act, and you covered for I covered uh, Ravel, yeah, Ravel, yeah, Ravel, yeah, and I went on a few times, yeah, it was, yeah, and I got to sing with the one and only Rebecca Luker. Oh, that how was, was that? Kind of friggin' amazing. That production was enormous. It was amazing. I actually never saw it because they didn't swing you out. They wouldn't swing anybody out of the show, so I never saw the show. So you were always in it. Every I was day? always in it, so I had a great seat, but I don't, I didn't get to <sighs> step back and see the, you know, sort of. Diorama. It was also like a big cast. It right? was, yeah, seven, like, yeah, I thought it was enormous. Like seventy, was it seventy or seventy-two? Yeah. Incredible. I mean, and that's a good thing because that season there weren't that many musicals, so it was good. It was like three casts in one. Right. <laughs> More people employed. It was. I think Rebecca was up against Glenn Close yes. in Sunset Boulevard and that year. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And that's and Glenn Close is back. Yeah, and she's back. Right, exactly. Yeah. So, it's, uh, but but unfortunately, there's not. Show would you do a show? Would you step in and do um, Gaylord with Rebecca Luker if she wanted to do it this week? <laughs> in a heartbeat. In a heartbeat. So, um, Becky, how, if you're watching, how do you? What, what was your audition like? Th that was your For first that? Broadway show. Yeah. So how, tell me, I, want, I don't know much about your origin story. Well, the um, I actually, you know, I had been in, uh, I had not too far f from that audition, I had been in law school and uh, decided to leave because it wasn't really for me. So uh, a couple years later, uh, I met uh, an agent kind of person, manager person down in Chicago. But you knew you could sing. But I knew I could sing. I'd been singing since I was about I mean, Did you do like high school shows and stuff? A little bit, yeah. I mean, I went to an all-guys Catholic school, so it was one of the only co-ed events that there was. So it was a, it was a fun thing to do and uh, in that regard. But the um, uh, but I um, she basically, this person had heard me sing, you know, in some doing some community theater opera that I was doing. Mm -hmm. And so they said, well, they're doing Showboat, and you might be right for this, uh, you know, for Ravel. And I knew of the show from the movie that I had seen as a kid, but, and of course, the song that everyone knows. Um, but, uh, but so long story short, um, I went down to Chicago uh, to audition, um, you know, for the, um, you know, the music director, Jeffrey Heward, a musical supervisor. And then I got a call back about two months later saying that you, you want to you gotta come to New York and audition for Hell Prince. And it was one of the last times I've ever done this where you went on the stage, just the ghost light and the piano. Oh, so and sang, yeah, I mean, it was. I'm trying to remember which theater it was. It was kind of in the phantom -y area. Wow. Um, if it was the Golden or where we were. Right. But yeah, and I mean, it was, you know, people were like, you know, I, I remember walking in and somebody was smoking and I was like, oh God, it's messing up my voice and I got to sing these high <laughs> B flats and whatever. But it was, it was amazing. And it just this dark, you know, spectacles on the head shape in the back that I could kind of see, and I finish, and you say, oh, you're very good. So, okay. thanks. And then I didn't get it, and it was a year later that I got it, so. Brooke wants to know, what was it like working with Norbert Leo Butts and Aaron Tveit on Catch Me If You Can? Now, you actually, is this correct, mm -hmm. you were, you played one of the uh, agents yep, right? FBI, right, in, yeah. in Catch Me If You Can, mm -hmm. and you also covered for Norbert? I did. Yep. You did that, did you do that crazy number? I did. Breaking the rules? I breaking, I did. did. I did. I did. I did. It was yeah. Uh, it was, don't break the rules. Yeah. That, yeah. that number was insane. Um, but I you actually, also had covered for him in Dirty Rotten Scoundrels. I did. Yeah. So you're like you're like a Norbert. I had I had been a Nor something yeah, Norberty about a Norbertine uh, cover for a while there. Something yeah. butsy <laughs> about Joe <Cassidy. laughs> Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> that was the that was the deal for a while.
while there. No, I did. Um, he uh, Norbert's great. I mean, he's a, you know phenomenal talent. He's a great guy. Um, and Aaron's amazing. They want to know about Aaron. Yeah, Aaron what, is, what, yeah. They yes, he is they the answer. His skin is fantastic. <laughs> the hair is glorious. He's an epically talented guy. He also, Aaron has an unbelievable uh, ethic, too, I think. I mean, in terms of his, like, work yeah. ethic. That guy is just, like, the show was paramount. He took care of himself. Um, he wasn't a big party guy. Yeah, he's um, a real professional. You know, he's a real, and a real theater yeah. person. Yeah, and yeah. absolutely. Yeah, he was. He was and he, he was, was brilliant in that show. He was amazing. Oh my god, overlooked, that show. egregiously overlooked. <laughs> uh, Abigail wants to know what's your favorite role you've performed so far anywhere. My anywhere. favorite role that I've uh, performed, I think, uh, close to my heart is Dan in Next to Normal. Um, it's a beautiful show. I you know was a part now of. Now that was called. Now I got to see that the first version of Next to Normal mm-hmm. was called what? Uh, Feeling Electric. Feeling Electric mm-hmm. at the Nymph. I at saw the Nymph, that. Yeah, and you yeah. played Dan in that. I was version. Dan in that version. Yeah, with Amy Spanger, the amazing Amy. Annalie Spanger. Ashford. Annalie Ashford. That's yeah, the family right there. there it's you crazy. Go. Exactly. And Anthony Rapp was in it. And Anthony Rapp. Yeah. I, yeah, I saw it. It was Beth great. Schrader, it was yeah. long. It was. It was long. It was, it was long was and a full. little mm-hmm. unformed. It was, but it, brilliantly unformed. It was like, I'm so happy I saw it. I love that you put it that way. I actually said to uh, Tom and Brian, I said, I feel like this show. <laughs> Maybe that's why they went on to a different person when it went to Broadway. But, <laughs> but they, they said, I said to them, I think this show reminds me of those sculptures uh, that you see uh, in Italy that are like look like they're wrestling from the rock, like uh-huh. they're not done yet, but you uh-huh. can see the spectacular piece of art. And I said, this thing was just, it's beautiful. And I mean, you know, I've gone on to work with Brian and Tom and other stuff. They're amazing, and it was. When well, you was, went into the Broadway company, I did. Well, I actually too. just covered the doctor for um, just for like a week or whatever. Okay. But I've gone on and did. I did a production of it in um, right. Arizona. Um, uh, well, you were brilliant. Cast. Like, well, like my you. my takeaway from Feeling Electric was, holy crap, Joe Cassidy is amazing. So just, <laughs> thank just you, FYI, I've told you that many times. Thank because, you, I much appreciate it. Because you were wonderful. Well, I appreciate um, it. But yeah, that show, it must have been really cool to see it early like that. Like yeah. To, to, be, to see that. Well, thing. yeah, to I mean, there's so many shows sometimes that don't see the light of day, and um, that was one that, thank God, did, because it was, we knew pretty quickly, like, wow, this is a really special piece. Right. And, I mean, it had a fan base before... It's also common now for people to do that, but it had, before it was even done, just from the Nymph show alone, it had a massive, like, following on the, on right. the internet of, like, a little, you know, chat clubs that had yeah. been, yeah, it was amazing. Yeah, there's clips of you singing that stuff. Oh, see? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, I've heard them. Uh, right. People want to talk about Waitress, but first, yeah. Brooke asked a very important question. Mm-hmm. What was it like working with Adina Menzel? You were in If Then. I was in If Then. Another favorite. Did you watch Beaches yet? I have not seen it yet. Oh, yeah. No, 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 no. I, I, have to, I DVR'd it. Uh, yeah, exactly. So I got yeah, to sit down. I got to catch up. You're a big chick flick guy? Well, sure, you're in a course, chick yeah. flick musical right <laughs> exactly. now. I am, in, I am in a chick musical. Exactly. <laughs> a great chick musical. Uh, but how was Adina Menzel? She is about as uh, lovely as it gets. Um, she was, you know, she was phenomenal. Um, she, you know, um, she's was extremely warm to the to the cast. Um she one of the first things she said at the at the meet and greet, she was like, "Please include me," you know, like don't uh, think don't think I don't yeah. want to go just because I'm yeah. I'm you know laying low and right. uh, which I just thought was adorable. Like we weren't gonna you know invite right. don't invite a demon. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> <so awkward. laughs> but don't assume that she doesn't yeah. want to be included. Don't assume right. she and she right. you know she was just wonderful and she threw some lovely you know parties for the company and um, just to kind of hang out and she was you know she was amazing and she you know also you know really put her whole self into that. Yeah. So let's talk about Waitress. Right. That's where you are right now. I am indeed. Uh, so somebody wanted to know, have you met Sarah Barillas? Has I she been did. around? I did. I actually, I met her uh, first, uh, though I didn't say anything to her because it didn't seem like the right venue. I met her in the bathroom at Telsey at the audition because they have well, they have gender neutral bathrooms. So was you're she walking. at your audition? She was, yeah. Okay, yeah, she was there. She's at a lot of auditions. She was at yeah. the audition, yeah. And uh, she was very lovely, but it was, you know, brief. And, wait, and so you started about the, wait. So we, before I, I or after your audition? Before, or before. Right before. Yeah, and so I wish I had something witty to say, you know, when I walked in, but I, I just let it go. So. <laughs> she saw you wash your hands. She saw me wash my hands. Good. So that's why I think that I could have screwed up everything. Yeah, you don't want to get that low, you know, get the B rating in the diner. You know, <laughs> otherwise, <laughs> the B she grade. like makes a little note. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> didn't wash hands. <laughs> so, so she was great, but she did, she actually just came and saw the show again. Um, and uh, was backstage and you know ran up to me and was really very lovely. So that was she's 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 amazing. She's she's awesome and she does that karaoke thing too that I think is oh, yeah. so phenomenal. Like I just joined the They're cast fun. and said and someone said oh stick around now you're gonna want to watch this and it was amazing. You know she just lets people come up and sing songs from the show with the band. I mean I was like that's so cool. Right. So I thought that was amazing. Do you uh, are you a big fan of the score? I, mean, I am. Pretty I, great. I, it is. I think it's a beautiful. I think it's a beautiful show. My mom had come well before I'd even had an inkling of being in the show. My mom came to visit just to come, 
and she wanted to see a show. And I said, you know, I got a couple friends in the show. Um, and uh, let's go. Let's go see Waitress. I've been meaning to see the show. I'm embarrassed. I've waited this long to see it. Right. And uh, we went. So I was like, I love this. This is a great show. And then all of a sudden, the job came. I'm like, Well, this is nice. Woohoo! Hey, mom, I'm in that show hey, now. Hey, mom, look, you remember that show? We saw him be in it. Yeah. Uh, okay. So. Scott said, "Sorry, I'm coming in late. Hmm. Is the mustache required for the role of cow?" Well, I think. They probably would make a person wear a mustache, and I can think of fewer, less fun things to do on a stage than to wear a mustache because they always feel like they're going to fall off. Invariably, they do. Right. So but you uh, can't sweat. You can't. You, you no. You can't. Right, um, it's awkward. And they try to cut them so that they, you know. But it just, you know, it's just, it's better if you can grow one. So. so is this the first time you've had a beauty like this on your face? This is the longest I, I did this. I I cut a my uh, grew my mustache out like this for a concert I was doing years ago at Joe's Pub, but I I haven't kept it, and uh, my wife does not love this. So what about the mutton? The, mu <laughs> the mutton's too. Yeah, they she. Uh, it's a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot going on. They they they. It's a lot. They actually had me gray these up a little bit too. Uh, even further up. So So does your wife have like a countdown at home about yeah. how many days left <laughs> so you can the show you? She's got the yeah the the, the, the erasable write off board like yeah countdown to my husband's face again. But yeah. I mean speaking of Rebecca Luker, Danny Burstein shaved like I feel like within a half hour. Yeah he of, did <laughs> of leaving the he stage. Did. He did. I think he did it immediately in his dressing room. He may, I think. I feel like he came out the stage to a clean shaven. Maybe I'm making that up. I have but no on idea. Facebook yeah. there was a photo really quick of I him, remember, yeah. Of his boyish face. He probably <laughs> raffled it off. I mean I don't know that but no that's true. <laughs> <laughs> you probably like, yeah, shaved heavy. Here you go. <laughs> <laughs> Biggest donation gets to shaved heavy. Uh, okay, Scott said, you always have Broadway actors talk about the marathon pace of doing eight shows a week. I didn't mm -hmm. know. I, I did, but mm -hmm. that, is, that is true. Eight shows a week. Mm -hmm. uh, is it as grueling as it sounds? You know, I think it kind of depends on uh, what you have to do. Obviously, right. like, you know, Jesse's show is far busier than mine. How is that Jessie Mueller? She's... Uh, this your again, first... Did you know her before? I had just met her once casually, uh, okay. you know, at an event, but I... Um, and... Uh, but I had no, we didn't know each other really at all. Ironically, we have... We're, we're connected through friends from like right. 20 years ago, which is kind oh, of funny. that's but, cool. Um, yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, she's she's lovely, and she's... Um, she has a beast of a show. She has do. a beast of a show. Again, mm -hmm. another person that is just a... You know, has, the, has her head on right about the job. Um, I uh, am not the quickest <laughs> on the uptick for something sometimes. I just noticed something in this little moment. I'm not going to say what it is, but it was one of those things that as an actor, I was leaving the stage for the maybe the 10th performance I'd done, and I went, oh, that's what she's doing. I just got what she's doing. And mm. it's, this, it's just this little nuanced thing that mm. maybe the audience is catching, maybe they're not. It took me a little while to catch it. Uh, but I love that she did that, and I don't even want to say what it is because mm. it, it'll draw light to it, but it, right. it's, it's that kind of, you know, there's just very, very, the de attention to detail in her work is pretty, uh, is very impressive to me. So. You also have moments where you're like in the kitchen, mm -hmm. right, like cooking when things are happening, yep. right, where you're just like, that's my memory yep. of it, like you're listening yeah. and like, are you paying attention to what's happening? And what does your kitchen look like? How, uh, how much kitchen stuff is in there's, there? There's a ton of kitchen stuff. Most of it is not practical. It's, you know, it's, it's solidified. You can't actually you, I can't, make me pancakes I cannot make show. you pancakes. Well, I can make you the rubber ones that we have. <laughs> that, that, that <laughs> I have yeah, they're, they're there all the time. They're, you know, they're like cooked on one side. <laughs> so if anybody up in the balcony can see them there, you know, I have to make it look like I'm pouring those bad boys. But uh, I no. might pay for like a like an autographed pancake. That these are auction off be rubber pancakes. Well, so we'll have to have the kind of prop cool. department get, make a bunch of those. Yeah, exactly. That's a good idea, actually. Props. Uh, <laughs> Chris Pantuzzi, you want to make those? Okay, wait. Abigail, getting a lot. Abigail wants to know your go-to audition song. What's the best song to show off Joe Cassidy's oh my God. really beautiful voice? Well, great thank voice. you. I. Uh, it depends. A friend of mine, a, a wonderful composer named Andrew Gerla, um, wrote this um, piece called The Public Library. Um, and if I'm singing a piece where a person has to um, uh, show a little emotional range as well, like a story too, song. It's a story song. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's this d uh, dad just championing, saying, you know, his kid's getting picked on, and he said, you know, mm -hmm. this was a place that I went when I was being picked on as a kid, and it was a I could escape to these wonderful stories, and I just I love it. And every time you hear it, people are like, well, that's a really lovely song, uh -huh. and it has you know some range to it as well too, which is kind of nice. It sounded um, beautiful. And I didn't even hear it. See, isn't it nice? <laughs> it's, no, it's, not, it's, a, it's a nice one. And then I have a um, there's a, a country song that I do a lot of times for for pop auditions. That's called "That's Another Song." That's like this sort of slower huh. um, one for that. And then I have. So we're gonna steal these songs now. They see, sound really exactly, see exactly, exactly. Or I'll pull out a stick song every once in a while for. <laughs> uh, really okay, good. finally, Emily wants to know: Are there any weird or wonderful stage door stories? There's a lot of stage door fan. Like there's a lot of fans oh, right. of the show. Right. What, what are the what are the fans like? The fans for waitress are pretty have been lovely. I mean, again, yeah. I've only been in the show for a little while, um, 
they um, they want my autograph, which is nice because sometimes nice. you're in a show and you walk out, you just kind of quietly walk past the crowd. <laughs> they go, oh, oh, yeah. oh yeah. where's Jesse? Yeah, but you're like making out on stage. Yeah, right. and you're doing exactly, all stuff in the exactly. Show. It's the it's the mustache that, that gets the most play. <laughs> it's a crazy facial hair. Uh, it, exactly. And I always yeah. say, can you Photoshop me a better hairline when you when you post this online? Um, Wait, what? I always say, can you give me a better hairline than this oh. one that I have? So <laughs> I have more. I have way more forehead than you do. As you see in that picture there. You have a six or seven head. Um, <laughs> But uh, there haven't really been a whole lot of... I haven't any awkward moments at the, at the stage door. Um, How about with the Dina fans? The Dina that. fans were pretty, were pretty, in, were pretty intense. Um, yeah. they definitely, that was one where definitely I could walk out unscathed at the door. But uh, <laughs> they, they definitely wanted to see Adina. Um, they, you know, they were, they, people are actually pretty respectful at the door. I mean, I know I've yeah. seen some pretty gnarly comments sometimes online. You go, wow, man. It's, okay. Yeah. But um, but generally speaking, people have been really friendly. I mean, as someone who's understudied a fair amount over the years, I mean, a, a funny moment where that used to happen a fair amount when I was in Les Mis. Um, what was the name of that character you played? Uh, the main character that you played, the one that's like listed in IVD. I can't say a lot of Les Mis characters. Well, uh, well uh, Kuf Kufarek is it? Yeah, it's Kuf say it again. Kufarek. No, I'm no. probably mispronouncing it myself. No, it's fine. Yeah, he's, he's, he's a, he's has more in the book to do, okay. uh, as they all do, most of those students. But. Um, but, uh, and then I covered Valjean, and I had more hair, long hair, and a beard. And I would leave as an ensemble member, and people would grab me, and they would just be weeping. And I remember this, like, southern guy came up to me, and he was such a nice man. He's like, he's like boy, that, that message, you know, to love another person is to see the face of God. That's just, that's just, that's just dead on when you said that. And I was like, and I didn't have the heart to tell him. I was like, thank you. Yeah, no, it's yeah, you're, just you're, you're sure you are it's right. Better so, to yeah. just let I just said, okay, that. you're right, you're right. <laughs> And some kid said, you know, one, another kid said to me, you know, how do you do that falsetto thing? And I, and I you know, get, you want to say, that wasn't me. Because uh, <laughs> it was Mark McVeigh, who's an incredible singer. And I just, I was like, well, what you, you know, I was like, thank you for saying that. I just, sometimes, you know. Do you think that first guy, like a minute after you left, the real Valjean came out and he was like, yeah. what the hell? <laughs> 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 and Mark is a southern boy, so he probably was like that. No, it was, yeah. Name, <laughs> in my version, he is. <laughs> he is okay. We've run over. Thank oh. you so much for being here, Joe. Hey, Paul, thanks for having me. You are in Waitress for like how much longer? I'm uh, through February 12th. Cool. And then we'll see because because Eric Anderson can't stop working. Yeah. It's a good thing. <laughs> I'm, glad, I'm glad you're on Broadway. Thank you. Glad to be back. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you tomorrow, live at five. Bye. -bye.